Well, you can go ahead and eat. I should say, go ahead and eat. I'll give Grace after it all. I don't want it to get cold or nothing, but that's wonderful. But I got to say, you know, I normally don't get up here and pick on people. I do, do offer a few Irish jokes, but today I do get the opportunity to, to pick on somebody because it was just a few weeks ago as I was walking into the office. I mean, the, the place was a flutter. All the you know, parishioners there were coming up to me and handing me a telegraph, a recent telegraph about this about this event and. Uh, and the comment that Bernie made about me, I, my, my emails, if none of you saw it, it was the last sentence, the last paragraph inside there, and he starts naming all these wonderful people who are coming, and then at the last paragraph, he went down, oh my gosh, we got the Reverend Bob Gilmet. He is, he's got a fan club of women who follow him everywhere, okay? <laughs> he's this brawny gentleman. First off, Bernie, brawny, shaved the beard and cut the hair. When was the last time you bought paper towels, okay? <laughs> Right. Uh, you look on the Brownie Man on your paper towels, okay? So, <laughs> I am the original Brownie Man. But he says that, but you know, over the years I have had troubles recently, again, with certain people following me in my life and needing to deal with those issues. I, I have lawyers for that, and I just so happen to have mine here today. His name's Obi Lamontang. Can you please stand? He'll be talking to you a little later on to take care of that article in the newspaper, all right? <laughs> so, Thanks. thank you very much. But it is great to be here today with all of you. And, and as always, they always invite the Catholic priests up here because, again, uh, it's a good portion of Ireland. It is the Catholic people you know, and so quite often there are the great, great Catholic priests over the years have been there, O'Tooley and O'Shea and Dick Murphy and all of them, wonderful. But one of the great things about my profession is that so many times people always ask me, again, what, Father, what do you hear confessions all the time, you know, out of the interesting things? And as you know, there is a great seal of confession, but if I can disguise the name and the situation, well, we can get by this day with a few of them from people that I know very well in their lives. And so as always, there's some great humor out there that you hear every once in a while. You know, a gentleman comes up to me the other day and again, sheer tears and anger. He says to me, you know, Father, I feel so awful. He says, what do you mean? He says, I was driving myself down the road the other day and I was trying to find myself a parking spot. I was late for the meeting. I, I knew if I didn't make this meeting, I would never make it again. I would, I would lose my job during these hard times and economic times. So I said to my God, I said, dear God, I says up in heaven, I says, if you find me a parking spot right now, I will go to my knees every week to mass and I'll give up me whiskey. And in a matter of a moment, the parking spot opened and I turned to God and I said, don't worry God about that. I found one, I can take care of myself. <laughs> Oh, poor gentleman, that gentleman. Oh, then there's the other priests who've been great evangelizers over the years, have always done so well to, to bring people back to the, the lovely God who loves them as always. And so again, Father O'Tooley makes his way into the bar, nowhere else to evangelize. And so he walks in, he turns, and the first gentleman he sees, he says, do you want to go to heaven when you die? The gentleman in sheer fear says, yes. And he says, get up against that wall over there. And he turns to the other gentleman on the end of the bar stool who with a stack of pint glasses around him says, do you want to go to heaven when you die? And he turns around and says, yes, Father. And up against the wall you go. And to the third gentleman in the corner back with the, the empty patty bottle in that corner, he says, and do you want to go to heaven when you die? And the gentleman says, oh, oh no, Father, I don't want to go. He says, what do you mean? He says, you don't want to go to heaven when you die, do you? And he says, well, I want to go to heaven when I die, but I don't want to go on the early bus today. <laughs> so there you go. But oh, yes, some of the greatest ones. But they always say this to you myself. I have to say, oftentimes the greatest things that people always ask me is where do priests go for confession? We go to each other. We do. We go back and forth. And the other day, I did have a nice Irish priest here in Nashville. We won't mention his name. Come to me huh, recently and tell me about his, his escapades. He said he was driving down the road, and the state trooper pulled him over. And as the state trooper pulled him over, he noticed in the front seat of the car that there was a, a bottle of wine inside there. And yes, and as the police officer turned to him and smelled his breath, he says, what have you been doing? I can smell that, that alcohol on your breath. And as I looked down on the bottom of the bottle, I turned around and says, oh, dear Lord, he's done it again, that water into wine. So <laughs> there you go. That's what confessions are all about. You want to know that's what they are all about. But today they've asked me to actually be up here to kind of speak again and bring invocation. You know, if you were here last year, I told you what St. Patrick's Day was all about. St. Patrick's Day in the United States of America was started for one reason only. It was the Irish people. They were, again, very much discriminated against just down the road in Boston and New York City. On the front of stores, it would say the Irish need not apply. They were considered dumb. They were considered ignorant. And they were, again, because of their accents and because of their last names, again, their dignity was lost. And they pulled themselves up as a community, a community of people who felt strong about themselves. They educated themselves, and they began to become very active in their civil areas. 
They became such great professions, as we know, as police officers. They went into law enforcement and civic services. They began to serve the community of people that discriminated against them. And so when St. Patrick's Day was started here in the United States of America, that's why they continue in New York City to march down the streets on St. Patrick's Day, not just for a few pints, again, we may do it this day, or a few lovely floats. They marched years ago to celebrate St. Patrick's Day here in the United States to say that we are people, we hold our head up high, and we have dignity. That is why we celebrate this day here in the United States. But today, we've come for other people who hold their head up high. Again, a community sometimes who may look at them and find them in some unique way not to be worthy of what they're offered to do, but because of this great witness of the young man to my left today, which brought tears in my eyes, today you gathered here today for this plus breakfast to bring dignity to a people who deserve it. Again, again, in the, from a profession where I speak from, we call that social justice, where we turn around and we uplift the people who are impoverished and oftentimes, again, feel neglected. This day, they shall not be neglected. That is why we will continue to support such endeavors like this and the Plus Company, who bring that wonderful sense of spirit and again, this day I come, yes, as a gentleman of the spirit of a divine pastor, to speak of a divine God of Almighty who says to us his thumbprint of creation, that I created you out of love, I created you out of dignity, I created out of you out of compassion. And so this day, as we gather this day, that prayer swirls around this room for the Plus Company, that may continue to serve those with great smiles, with great hearts, and, and again, young men and young women full of passion in their lives. And as always, as we fill our stomachs this day, we know that we are happy for the food that stands before us. We understand that many go hungry this day. May we continue to alleviate hunger in our world, but most of all, may we hunger to know the Almighty's great love for us. Amen. <laughs>